from the Saguna form, the form of God, to the Saguna form. Much more. I was the first devotee in my family. 
So we only been there for three generations and four generations and so on. So who am I to come and talk to you all about the glory of Bhagwan when I should be the other way around? Even now I'm willing to sit there and once you take over, if Nimish can take over now, I'd be more than happy uh, to listen. But then something struck me. People need to be reminded again and again. And one of the things which I heard during the Mahasamadhi and thereafter several times, and I'll come back to that later on, is that there is a vacuum. There is a vacuum. There is a vacuum. Ardent devotees who have been with Swami, who have had the benefit of having been with the physical form for years and years and years, even today, after almost seven years, are not able to accept it. And they probably will never be able to accept it. To be fair, people have been very, very close. It's probably in a lifetime we will not be able to accept it. That's a different story. When I hear this thing, vacuum, vacuum, when I hear this, something tells me it's not right. Because after all, Tommy had told us, he had told us not once, he told us a million times, don't get attached too much to this form. That's the first thing. The second thing that Tommy has told us is, I am not this form. And if you think I'm just this one little form, then you're underestimating me. You don't even know my glory. You don't know who I am. You just think I'm the one little form of Satya Sai Baba which has come. It's only a manifestation of who Baba is, of who the Lord is. He has many such manifestations. And therefore, there is no vacuum at all. What happened to all the years in history before Swami came? Swami was there in some other form. Similarly, all the millions that have to follow, also Swami will be there. During that short period of about 85 years that He came here, it doesn't mean that's the only time that the Lord walked here. The Lord will be there before, the Lord is there after. But what is of relevance to us is that we are the chosen few. We are the chosen few. Many of us have come to this world, whether it's Rama or Krishna or any other form of Sri Baba or any other form that you can talk about, many avatars have come to this world. But in no other avatars time, while they were alive, while they were in the physical form, did they have millions and millions of devotees worshipping them as God. I think in human history, this is the first time and the only time that this has happened, that when an avatar walked the earth, people actually accepted him as God. You tell me if there's any other. Maybe I'm missing something. But to my knowledge, there is not. Okay? And within that few million of people, you nobody knows how many people are devotees. In fact, we don't, there's no definition of a side devotee. If you worship some other form, does it mean you're not his devotee? That is also not true. Okay, if you don't worship him in this form, does it mean you're not a devotee? That also is not true. There is no definition of a side devotee. But even if you take people who are connected with the organization, who follow the form, who have been worshipping the form, certainly there must be a few million people in this world. Today, the world has over 7 billion people. Okay? And even if we are one among the few million people, we are still the chosen few. Swami has handpicked them. All of to become his devotees. He's handpicked all of us. Everyone, as was mentioned, everyone sitting in Dharmashetra, not sitting in Dharmashetra, who are thinking of him now or not thinking of him now, are all the ones whom he has handpicked one by one by one. And but for his single power, we will not, we will neither be his devotees, nor will we be here today to enjoy his bliss. So that is the greatest blessing which the Lord has given us, for which we cannot even repay it in any form. How can we ever repay to the Lord for picking us as his chosen few? But that also, and I'll come back to that later on, that also places a huge responsibility on us. Because then, by being his chosen few, we are also his ambassadors in his way. 
And therefore, unless these ambassadors perform now, and the next 10 to 20 years are extremely important, if we, the chosen one, the one whom he has chosen, if we don't do what we are supposed to do, I think we have let down the very Lord who chose us. And therefore, there's a great responsibility put on us. And I'll come back to that uh, a little later. People ask me, devotees, non-devotees, sometimes new devotees, they ask some questions. So let's take one of the frequently asked questions. Because these questions reverberate in people's minds. And you say, oh, I also thought of the same thing. Whenever we ask something, sometimes people are shy to us. But when you say it, okay, I had the same doubt, you know. So one of the things that people ask is, one of the people thing is, people tell me is, you know, I am shy to say that I am Swami's devotee. Okay, it has happened to me as well. I would be coming from Chennai to put up a tree, even when Swami was there. And if somebody asked me in the airport where I was going, I said, I'm going to Bangalore. I want to get to put What will that fellow think if I tell him that I'm going to put up a seat? Okay. Will I go down in his opinion, in his esteem, if I tell him I'm going to put up a seat? You know? It took me many years, in fact, to tell people, proudly, putting their head up and say, I'm going to put up a seat. You know? That was once when I read in one of Tommy's speeches, where Tommy directly says, Never be shy to say that you are my devotee. And if somebody asks you, where is God? Tell them with full confidence that God is in Puttaparthi. Okay? Now, even an ardent devotee, it's not easy to say that. The people may not believe in Bhagavan, number one. They may not even be of the same faith. They may belong to a different religion. They may belong to everyone. But are the other people uh, shy to tell you? I'm going to, uh, you know, Israel, I'm going to Bethlehem, I'm going to see the Pope, I'm going to see this, and they tell you probably, no? They tell you they're going to Mecca and Medina, no? So how can we say that going to put up with you? How can we feel so? If we feel shy, that means we still have our faith to be developed more and more. So that is the first thing that I want to tell you. Never, ever be shy to say that you are a devotee of Bhagavan. Be proud of it because he has brought you to him. We didn't go there. Without the Sangal part would never have happened. And once he has chosen you, given you such, whether you hold a position in the organization or not, is immaterial. A position in an organization is nothing. Much, much more important is to be connected to him as a humble devotee. I think that is far superior to being a trustee or a state president or a All India president or anything. Those are all immaterial. Okay? Being a devotee and having a direct connection, heart to heart connection with Swami, for which you need no part. You don't need anything. I think that is the greatest thing that you should be proud of and for which we should thank Swami. The other thing which people ask me is can I worship some other God also when I am worshipping Swami? Is there my book? Uh, this is a book which I wrote. Some of you may have seen it. I wrote five copies. It's called Satisfied Baba and Lives On. If you've not read it, I would encourage you to read it because many of these questions are actually answered there. And they're all different chapters. In fact, I'm going to freely use from this book because that is my life story and my life experiences with Bhagavan. So, one of the things which I used to ask myself is we get into these kind of situations. You see, I began, told you I became a devotee 25 years ago. At that time, my father-in-law was a very big Ayyappa devotee, okay? And he was a Guru Swami. He had gone 40, 50 years to, I don't know, all of you know Ayyappa, because in the south, all of us know, maybe here you don't know, but after this in Shabri Malay, so you take a, you know, 10 minutes, 40 days, and then you go uh, to Shabri Malay and so on. So, I also used to go. After, after getting married, I also started going. About 18 years, I went. Somewhere around that time, I become a Swami devotee. Now, problem starts. What's the problem now? Okay, so when you have this 40-day rhythm that you take, you know, you have to sing the Ayapa song, you have to sing the Ayapa bhajans, you have to do all that. But on Thursday, we sing Thai bhajans. Okay, now what are you doing? Okay, 
you won't be taking the IFR thing, but you have to do the third-day side bhajans, or you will do the IFR bhajans, or what will you do? Okay. So, it's so happening that one day I'm wearing the mala and, and all that, going to Southern Malay and sitting there. And we've been singing some IFR songs. And then IFR came. Now, the asking for Southern Malay, IFR as well as Sai uh, Baba is different. Okay, now how do we end this bhajan? And it's getting close to the end, you know. So, in my house, and it's there, the pictures are there, I try to, you know, produce photographic evidence of every miracle that has happened uh, through this book. So, there are two big pictures. One is uh, Guru Ayyappan on one side, Ayyappa on the other, with uh, Satishtai Baba in the middle, the Shiridi Baba, and then there are two Padukas, and I'll come back to the Paduka in a moment. So, there are two Padukas, yet one under the Ayyappa picture, and one under the Guru Ayyappan picture. Okay, now I'm in a real dilemma. I don't know what to do. Another five minutes to take RT now. I don't know which RT to take now. And how to end the budget. Okay. Silly it sounds, but these are the kind of situations one gets into in life. You know, when you have a conflict, you really don't know what to do. Okay. So, here we are. Bhajan is about to end. So, I'm looking at the picture. So, we have two flowers. One kept on top of the Ayapa picture and one kept on top of the Guru Ayapa picture. Okay. So, I look at Ayapa and I'm telling him, now what do you want me to do now? Take for you or take for Baba now? You tell me. Okay? And tell me now. Tell me next five minutes. I don't have much time, you know? One minute. I just said that. And the flower boom went from kind of the Ayapa picture. And the, the thing is kept here, Padita, the picture is there. It's clear two feet away. Okay? From there the flower goes, boom it goes, and falls on Swami's Padita. Okay? No, I said, thank you, Ayapa. I'm going to take the, you know, Baba Bhajan and went in with the RT, Mangala RT, and went in with this. So that went on. So first conflict stop. Coincidence, side incidents, you can call it whatever you want. Okay, all skeptics will say, look at the scientists talking all nonsense, just because the flower fell, he thinks. For me, the flower is enough. No more. Because I have to be giving the answer, no more. Then if I go, then why am I asking you? I have no faith. You know, what if I have no faith? Okay. And he has given me a sense, okay. So he doesn't end there. Next morning. So that when you put the Sayapa Mala, you have to get up at 5 o'clock and so on. This is January. Normally you go in January during the, uh, you know, Mangala Puja time. So you don't need, it's only time in Chennai, you really don't need AC, you don't need fan, you don't need anything. Okay? So I'm sitting now. So the one part is still missing. The other flower is there with Guru Arapa. Okay? So I'm telling a turn to him now, the morning, okay, and say, yesterday I asked him, and he put the flower, okay, now I'm asking you, what about you? The moment I asked, the flower fell onto the, onto the next part of the door. Now what are the things that don't occur in now, okay? But still we can say, oh, maybe that, even then, at that exact moment to occur, you know, do you think it's possible? Do you think humanly possible? Oh, I want to start for this. It doesn't happen that way unless there is divine grace. The next day when I prayed to grow up heaven and that also fell, that cleared all of my confusion. That was the last time I went to study in my life. Never went to it. I don't go to temples anymore. I stopped. Because for me, the answer was clear. Okay? Now, when I say this, people will say, you're talking blasphemy. You know? You're saying, don't go to temple. Don't go to this. Don't go to that. There's some Hindu ritual that the people here may even kill me here for saying that. I am talking about myself. I'm not talking about God. I'm saying what happened to me. Okay? All oh, God is saying, when Ayapa put that, he is saying he and Swami are the same. So why should you feel bad to worship either Ayapa or Swami? See, when Guru Arapan puts that, you can pray to Guru Arapan also, or you can pray to Swami. It really doesn't matter. I think Swami will get upset when you pray to Guru Arapan. You didn't pray to me. You think Swami is going to do that? When the Lord is one, and we take different forms, it really doesn't matter. You mentioned that you think of the form that you like. That form can be any form. You didn't see only this picture. I can look at that picture also, no? Okay, there is no division. It is all unity. Okay, so that's the second point that I want to tell you. We must have firm conviction in ourselves that all forms are the same. It's very difficult, let me tell you, but it's possible. For me, it's possible. 
So what happened then was, okay, uh, it didn't happen overnight. So this happened, okay, I still went to Sarimal at that particular time because I already put the mala, so it's gone. When I went there, I started seeing Swami everywhere there. Swami's pictures coming from, what, what is the chance of Swami's pictures coming in, in uh, Sarimal, of all places? You know, that was so many years ago. When I go there, I see Swami. I go to see the priest, there inside there, Swami's picture will be there. When I go somewhere else, Swami's picture will be there. After he has reinforced it several times, then it's no longer a coincidence, it is a side incidence. And from then on, then the faith is firmly established. People ask me, okay, it's all very easy to talk. From a platform you can talk. Okay. How do we know that when we are praying our prayers actually reach Swami? It's a doubt we always have, no? We are praying. Have you ever heard it or you not heard it? You may be busy doing so many things, you know. You are not the only one you are thinking about. You have got so many millions of people here. Other girls uh, uh, also you have to look after. Very busy you are. So the small little prayer of mine is it reaching you. I will give you an example of how it exactly happened that I know that our prayers are reaching him. So it was in Vrindavan in Whitefield. We were having an interview. And at that time, my wife was alive then, she had recovered from another illness. She subsequently died of cancer and so on, but she had recovered from another illness. She lost her hearing suddenly. And then the ENT surgeon had said that she can't travel because she was taking steroid injections, sudden some nerve problem in the ear, and he said it cannot. Miraculously, the day before he was supposed to go to Whitefield, the hearing came back. So he went and I asked my classmate, uh, Mohan Kamishra, who was also my close friend. He said, now can she travel? He said, yeah, she can travel. So she came. So she came. She was sitting in the Bhajan Hall of Vrindavan when we were inside in the interview room with Swami. Okay? And she was praying silently to herself. The, the Bhajan were over, everybody had gone. And we were inside with Swami. And she was praying to Swami saying, Swami, thank you. Swami, thank you. And she's saying it mentally. She's not saying it loud. There's nobody else in the not She's simply sitting there. And she's saying, Swami, thank you, Swami. Thank you, Swami. Thank you, Swami. Now, we are inside the, bus, inside the interview room, about five, six of us around Swami. And he was talking to somebody else. And then he turns to me and says, Doctor, why is your wife saying, thank you, Swami, thank you, Swami? She's sitting in the bhajan hall and saying, thank you, Swami, thank you, Swami. I didn't know that because I had come here. I didn't know that she was sitting there. So I kept quiet. I didn't say anything. I just, I don't know what to say. So I just kept quiet. And he was again talking. And again, the doctor is disturbing me. She's saying, thank you, Swami. 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 What is thank you, Swami? You know? When you are my devotee, it's my duty to help you. So please thank her, not to thank me. If you thank me, the value of what is it is good, he said. So I asked her not to thank me. Okay? Second time when he said it, everybody heard. There were others, the Jika Ramana was alive there, he was there, Ramani was there. All, all the Buddha and they all heard. So the moment the interview was over, we all went running to her and said, What are you doing? You know? And she said, I was saying thank you for me. That is disturbing him in fact. You know? So here is direct proof. What do you want? Okay? But the problem with the human mind is that you immediately dismiss it. Oh, that must have been a coincidence. That must have been a coincidence. Everything you say, you'll dismiss it. You should not do that. If Swami has given you any such blessing, in any form, you know, never dismiss it. Never think it was some inconsequential thing that happened. Take it as the greatest blessing. For me, what is a blessing? It's a blessing that is to, to be informed by the Lord in person that is hearing our prayer. Now, how many times, how many Lords will tell you that? How many opportunities will you get? To me, it is a revelation. Oh my God, when you pray, it's actually reaching Swami. Now, just because in his physical form he was there and he heard, and many of the miracles, I'm going to tell you two, three miracles, all of them happened. Not when he was standing next to me or I was sitting next to him. It all happened when you are miles away. Okay. So if it can happen then, why can't it happen now? In that case, Lord is Tommy gone. 
Son is not going anywhere. Son is with us. Satya Sai Baba lives on. That is the message. The whole message that I'm trying to tell you today is, He has not gone anywhere. He is there with us. Okay? Let me tell you a couple of stories. Again, they are there in the book. And you might have heard me say this earlier. But then that's what miracles are about. If it's a true miracle, it doesn't happen every second. No? Of course, our living itself is a miracle that way. Experiencing the Lord every day is a miracle. That's a different thing. But I'm talking about true medical miracles. You know, in the Catholic faith, before you are given sainthood, whether it's Mother Teresa or anybody, okay, at least one or two proven miracles should be done. One or two proven miracles of that person, only then the canonization occurs. Only then that person is elevated to sainthood. In Mother Teresa's case, also it had to be done. They had to go through a committee, they wait for some years, and so on. Okay? And what, is it, what does it mean in the Catholic religion? Once you are made a saint, any human being who has lived, and there are many others from India also who have, one nun from Kerala has also been made a saint and so on. In the Catholic religion, they believe that once you have been canonized, once you have been proclaimed to be a saint, you can then pray to that saint. Okay? And that saint is the gateway to God. That's what they believe. That's why they take time. And once they declare it, now you can pray to Mother Teresa, you can pray to anyone else, because the Pope and the others have now declared. Okay. If you look at it that way, I am sure every one of you sitting here, okay, has had at least one miracle. Tell me if anyone here has never had one miracle specifically. Raise your hand. Anybody sitting here who has not had one miracle in your life? Raise your hand. You don't see any hand going up. Do you see anyone of you who has had one miracle? Raise your hand. Let's see. All hands are going up. Okay? We need only two or one to be challenged. One only. I mean, one only you need. And you have a lot in the room with full hundreds and hundreds of miracles which have happened. That itself shows that Swami is not a saint. He is divine. He is in human form. He has come, but He is God personified. He is an avatar. That's the difference between a saint and God. So let me talk about two or three of medical miracles because you mentioned that if you talk about medical miracles, so let me talk about it. The first one was a lady, middle-aged lady. She had a lump in the breast which she neglected and she used to live in Kastantin Indian incidentally. And it turned out to be cancer. Unfortunately, she kind of delayed it a little bit so it had grown very big. And by the time she came to see me, and what happened was, she wanted to tell Swami that she is coming to Chennai. Some of that particular time, that friend Swami didn't go near her, so she waited a couple of days and she finally came over to Chennai. She was admitted in our hospital for control of first, got her diabetes control, and then we had to do her surgery. And she had been seen by a surgeon who had planned to do the surgery. She had been seen by an oncologist who confirmed that this is cancer and they had already planned the chemotherapy. She had been seen by a radiologist who felt that radiotherapy is also needed. On top of that, she has diabetes, so I am seeing her for the diabetic part also. Okay? The next day was the surgery. She was going to be done in the hospital. The day before the surgery, Swami calls one of her relatives and says, she could not meet me before she went to Chennai. Okay? She materialized Vibhuti gave it to him and said she's admitted in Dr. Mohan's hospital. She's to undergo surgery tomorrow. You take this Vibhuti, tell her I know all about it, okay, and go and give her this Vibhuti. So that man came running. And that night he said, he was doing wrong, he came. He came and met me. And then he said, I got Vibhuti from Swami. Swami said, tomorrow is surgery and all that. So this lady said, oh, good, 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 then no surgery for me tomorrow. I said, no, 
What if Swami say tomorrow is a surgery, you have to undergo a surgery? Swami doesn't say cancer surgery and come back. I would gladly send you back. Swami said tomorrow is surgery, so yes, confirm the surgery is there. You have to undergo surgery. She said, okay. Morning we get up. Okay, morning she gets up. In the hospital bed, where she is sleeping, all around her Vibhuti has come. Okay, around her. Vibhuti has come. Again, he said, see, 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 Vibhuti has come. That means Swami says, uh, no need for surgery, you know. I said, Swami didn't say anything like that. Did he come in your dream and tell you, even if you tell me now, the Swami came last night in my dream and said, no surgery, I'll just tell you, straight and simple. I believe you. Okay? He didn't tell you that. He just manifested Vibhuti. It doesn't mean there's no surgery. Let's continue with the surgery. So she went in for the surgery. Surgeon took out the tumor and he told everyone, oh, this is sheer hard cancer growth. So let's send it for. First, they do what's called the frozen section. Just cut it, just to get a quick idea. The pathology report takes time. Just get a quick idea what it is. In a few minutes, we can get it under the microscope. So they sent the frozen section. And he said, this is cancer and all, and we sent it. The report came back, there is no malignancy. Okay? So this man was in my way. He said, how can it be? I know cancer, so many years I've been operating. This is tumor of cancer. And he said, no, you know what? The hurry of doing it, they would have missed it. Somewhere they've taken the wrong section, they would have missed the cancer. So then he said, okay, I'm not doing the major surgery now. I'll just remove the tumor. Let me go and see the tumor. Then again, I'm sure they missed it. Let me come back and post it again. So the second surgery will post it. So he goes and looks at the tumor, section by section by section by section, there is no malignancy at all. And completely cancelled the whole cancer. Okay, this happened in my hospital. Okay. Then the oncologist says, doctor to give chemotherapy. I said, no doctor to give chemotherapy. There is no cancer first. So what chemotherapy are going to give? There is no cancer, what chemotherapy? You know? Radiologist said, but don't you think this is radiology? I said, no radiotherapy, no chemotherapy, no anything. Please, she goes off. No further treatment. She goes back to put up her teeth. She lived another 10, 12 years. There was no recurrence, no emergency, nothing. She died of old age. Okay? Nothing happened. Here's the true miracle which I have seen. Okay? Sometimes when I say this in medical profession, they will still question them. They still doubting down this. But in the first case itself, they didn't do biopsy, no. How do you know it is malignancy? Because all the doctors had said it's malignancy, and Swami had told that man, her relative who came there, she has cancer, but she never looked it. Okay? Swami didn't say, Swami definitely said, she has cancer, but tell her, don't worry, I look at it. And he looked at it. Okay? So that is the first miracle. The second miracle I want to talk to you about was a Muslim patient, a well-known man, he's still there. He's a leader of one of the Muslim sects in in uh, Kenya, a very well-known man, big businessman, rich man. This man had a very low pain pressure. You can't tolerate pain. Okay? So he got operated uh, for an ulcer at the back, a small uh, infection at the back. And this was extremely painful. Okay, so the first day after surgery, he just was yelling with pain, he couldn't get sleep, the whole night he didn't sleep. So, we had given him all powerful drugs. We gave him something, then we gave him something else, then painkillers, then finally we gave him pethidine, portway, and everything we gave him. Still the didn't sleep. Okay. The next day, second post-operative day, I was somewhere out. I got a call, no, this man is calling you, he wants you to come. So I went running to him and said, what? Dr. Mohan, I have full faith in you, I have come, okay? And I can't go through another night like this. So what do you want me to do? You know, pre-operative pain, post-operative pain is like that. You have to tolerate the pain, after a couple of days it will go. Don't tell me all this. I cannot suffer one more night of pain. You do something. I said, look, I've given you petrine, I've given you photoin, I've given you everything, I don't know any other medicine to give. You know, what else to give? I don't know all that you... You relieve me of my pain. Okay. I said, close your eyes. To close your eyes. That is the ring that Swami has left me with. Okay. Swami materialized the ring. Swami has even put his hand on it and left it. I said, close your eyes. Then I put his ring on his eyes. He closed his eyes. I put his ring, the ring on his forehead, like that, and like that. And just pray to Swami and said, Swami, you take over. 
I don't know what to do now. I don't have anything else to give now. I surrender completely. I don't have any more medicines to give. But the poor man, you know, you should not suffer with pain, Tommy. And just on humanitarian grounds, I pray to you, Tommy, please don't leave this man's pain. Okay, so all took about a minute's time. I said, open your eyes, open your eyes. I said, I'm going to get sick here, right? Before you ask anything else again. When I went out, the nurse came. He said, today what can I give? I said, what else? We have only the same president and what you you know? You give that to sir. You'll see what happens. I said, and I went. I said, I give it now. I said, don't give it now. Let's wait for some time. You know? Let's just delay for some time and give it a little later. I went home and having dinner. He rang me. And he said, sir, he's fast asleep. Now what do I do? Do I take him or what? I said, don't go take him and he's fast. How did he sleep? I don't know, sir. I went there. He is snoring and he has gone to sleep, you know. Fully he has gone to sleep. Within about 10 15 minutes after I left, he has had his dinner and he has knocked off completely. Nothing given, not even a frozen is given. Okay. And here is a man who is shouting with pain. Okay. I said, don't give it now. If he wakes up in the night, then you go and give him. Not till now he is stuck. This man has knocked out up to 7 30. The general and he has knocked out. Okay. He got up in the morning, pain gone, everything gone. And then he called the nurse and he said, what did you give me yesterday? He said, I didn't give anything. No, said, how did my pain go? I don't know, sir. You were fast to sleep, so I didn't come and give you. I asked of mom, he said, not to give you anything. So I didn't give you anything. So he was waiting. So then he entered the room. He said, Dr. Kami, what did you do? What did you do to me? I said, what did I do to you? Your pain is done. So what did I do to you? You have the time to go to the time to go to the time. So what did I do? No. You tell me what you did. You made me close my eyes. Something you felt, something you are touching me here, something you did. What did you do? I said, you really want to know? Yes, I want to know. I prayed to Bhagavan Baba and he cured you. I said, that man stood up and he said, your Baba is God. Okay? Muslim man stands up and he says, Your Baba is God. He has not come here. You have not given me any medicine. He has answered your prayer. You prayed to him and to us. When we pray to Allah, Allah answers our prayers. You have prayed to Bhagwan Baba and he has immediately given me, has been most merciful. We say Allah is most merciful. Your Bhagawan Baba is also most merciful and he relieved me of my pain. So he is Allah. Bhagawan Baba. Then I said, then I gave him Vibhudi. I gave him Tommy's pictures. He still takes Vibhudi every day. Okay. Then I asked him once, where did you come to Puttaparthi? He said, Doctor, I pray to him in my house. I cannot come. You know my people, how they are. The moment I come, he gets scandal. You know, when they will remove me from my leadership, they will remove everything. So, internally, I will pray to Swami, I will keep the Vibhudi, I will keep the pictures. He still carries the uh, Swami's picture. And every time I talk to him, he will say, You are blessed, Doctor. You are able to see the Lord. You are able to see the Lord in person, he will say. So, that's another miracle. To me, I cannot explain it. If that is not a miracle, I'd like to ask you, what is a miracle then? The man is crying and saying, without doing anything, one prayer to Tommy and Tommy cures him. If that is not a miracle, then I don't think there is any other miracle. To my mind. Third one. This concerns my own speciality, diabetic food. Okay? Much younger days, I was not a devotee of Tommy. That's it. Okay, I didn't even have my own hospital. I used to admit patients in a far away hospital. So, I admitted this patient, I sent him there, the surgeon had seen him, he started treating him, very bad diabetic foot, and you know how diabetic foot it can smell, it can be gangrene, and finally if it doesn't heal, you have to amputate the leg, there's no other goal. So we waited, and it's very costly, because you keep, keep on keeping the patient there, one week, two weeks, three weeks, bill will keep going around, finally you may amputate also. So after about two weeks or so, the lesion is not at all healing, it's getting worse, in fact. So the surgeon and I had a small conference and we finally said we better break news to this man and tell him that he has to have an answer. So both of us went, told him, sir, we're very, very sorry, we tried our best, we controlled the sugar, we did everything, we did everything possible, every medicine we have given, it is not healing, so we will have time to take, can we do it tomorrow? So we said, if you keep on going, your bill will keep going, so better that you have the amputation done. 
this man didn't bat an eyelid. He said, okay, no problem, give me one day. I'll tell you tomorrow. I'm not telling you today, to tell, I'll tell you tomorrow. He said, okay, what's the hurry, wait it so long, you tell us tomorrow. Next day, we go around. And this man tells me, that there is no need for anything. I said, but couldn't that we be saying it, not you? <laughs> we are the one who tell you there is no answer. No doctor, I am very confident. Open my wound and see. You know, healing would have started. You see. Yes, 24 hours. Healing would have started. You know? So let's see, doctor. You open and see the healing. So it's all bandaged. You see, it's not even seen the wound. It's all bandaged. Okay? So we removed the bandage and healing has started. Okay? In that wound. So I sat down. I said, there's something happening here. What, what happened? Tell me what happened. I mean, scientists just want to know what happened. No, Baba came, no, yesterday, and then he sat and went. I said, what? Baba came? Yes, he came last night, he said. I said, Satya said Baba came here. He said, yes, he came, very casual. Yeah, he came. I said, what did he do? He came. So where was the water? Others did no, all others were sleeping. And I was also sleeping. Then he tapped me. He tapped me, woke up, Baba sitting there. Baba, you have come. No, no, it's about your leg. They just came to talk to you about the leg. And what did you do? He sat there on the, you know, on my bed. He sat there, and then he just touched that bandage, and then he said, "You tell your doctor no need for anything." And he said, and "Then what happened? Then he disappeared." He said. I said, "Oh, he came. He sat there. He touched your bandage. Told you no need for amputation, and then he disappeared." Yes, that's exactly what happened. And I'm not a devotee, you know. So I told our surgeon friend, who was also not a devotee, I said, I don't know whether to believe that Baba came or did, but anyway, we need to heal now. So that part of it we have to accept now. Let's wait. He said, within two, three days, healing started, he was sent home, no answer. Okay. That was one of my first experiences that the Lord can actually come in physical form. So if he can come then, can he come now? No, only when you have a body that you come, no? He can go anywhere. And you have heard this. When you have heard, you have heard that he's been in several places. Okay? I know for sure some instances in Chennai, I don't want to tell you because the person who is there may not like me to tell you stories of his life. But I know for sure that it's happened to one of my close person in the organization. So Tommy has physically come to his house. Okay? So, these are kind of miracles. Now, let me tell you the last story about the medical miracle involving my mother. My mother is no more now. So, she underwent a surgery. This is a chronic asthmatic, and she had undergone a hip replacement surgery. Okay? So, the hip was uh, replaced with uh, a new hip and so on. Now, because she is asthmatic, she could not have the regular anesthesia. It's too dangerous. The lungs are weak. So, then, so they put in what is called an epidural anesthesia. They through the back, they put a little thing, and then you have to keep topping up the, the medicine so that the pain, uh, you know, goes away. So she's been, and she can't even move now. She's been operated, and I'm there in the hospital with her, and around 3 o'clock in the morning, she starts yelling, she starts shouting, and she says, Severe pain, 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 do something, do something, do something. I called the doctor, that tube which is put into the spine has slipped out. Okay? So you can't put it back now. You can't bend her again. And an if it is has to come, yes, again, bend her. There's no way you can bend her after she's undergone the surgery. What do you do now? She's crying with pain. First day post operative pain, she's crying to my mother. Okay? Mohan, do something, do something, she's crying. I said, Mommy, close your eyes. So I just sat there, prayed to Swami, took Vibhuri, and said, Swami, I have only one treatment for you. Swami Vibhuri. Okay? And I am giving this to you. I gave it to her. Within five minutes, she just left her. Since then, no pain. Okay? Now, I am a doctor. I am a scientist. For me to tell you this, that this happened, a medical person will not accept. My friends don't accept. My medical colleagues don't accept. How, can, how is it possible, Mohan? Well, it is possible. There is something that the divine power can do which medical science cannot explain. As simple as that. This is beyond science. Where science ends, divinity starts. Once you know that, then you will accept it. If you don't 
believe in that, you don't have faith in that, you will never accept it. And you will say, oh, he's just making up all these things. Okay? One of the things that Tommy has taught me, even when he was in his physical form, is that our personal sadhuka, sadhana, we should never, ever stop. That I can tell you through an incident which happened. So we have this paduka, this, uh, you know, Srinivasan uncle. Uh, we had uh, two padukas actually in the, in the house, and actually that is also described here. In all these years, I don't know how many years it is since we got the paduka in Puttaparthi, in all these years, only one day, only one day, I missed doing the paduka picture. One day, okay. What happened was my wife had gone to Puttaparthi. I was supposed to look after my small daughter who was a baby at that time, and I was putting her to bed and this and that. And that the process I forgot to do the party. Project. That night, Tommy came in my dream. Okay, very angry, extremely angry. And he, he has come in the dream. He comes to my house, and he, he doesn't even talk to me. And the same Tommy comes, don't talk to me. He says. And then he goes off. Say he goes into our guest room. And he's, uh, he's saying, I'm going to sleep now, and I haven't eaten. Okay? Let me tell you, this is the greatest thing that I can do to Tommy. He's not eaten, and he's going to bed. That's the worst punishment I can give you. So I'm crying. It's not the dream, of course. I'm crying. I'm touching his feet and saying, Tommy, what did I do wrong? Please tell me what I did wrong. You know, I, I accept any punishment that you give me. But what did I do wrong? Did you do my Paduka Puja today? You have not done the Paduka Puja. Then I realized, gosh, I've forgotten. At 3 a.m., I went down to the Puja room and did the Paduka Puja. Okay? So, again, do our prayers reach Him? Yes. Does our personal sadhana reach Him? Yes. So, what was your personal sadhana? Maybe anything. Doesn't matter. If you ask 100 people in the room, maybe 100 different sadhana. But he loves that sadhana that you do for him. Never, ever give up that sadhana. Now let's come to the fourth Mahasamadhi period. You can say all this is there and Swami is there. No. You can go and talk to him. You can ask him. You can give him a letter. You can ask him, you know, my daughter's uh, school admission, daughter's college admission, daughter's marriage, son's marriage, job, this, that. But tickets, you know, everything you can go and ask for me. Now, how do we go? That one is there now. How do we go? I will put it to you, and this is just my own view that when Swami goes from the Saguna form, the form of God, to the Nirguna form, the formless form, His power multiplies a million fold. He is not. Restricted to the small form of Sakya Sai Baba, where he has to control whatever he is doing because he is in that form. Today he is not limited by the form. He can come, he can go, he can do what he wants, he can be in 50 places at the same time. His power has multiplied several forms. And that is why you will hear increasing manifestations of Bhagwan post Mahasamadhi than when he was in his physical form. That is something which is easy to say, but some it is difficult to accept. Therefore, I would put it to you, my brothers and sisters, that have that faith and let us pray to Swami. If I came to Swami for only one thing, okay? Only one thing you want to pray to Swami. That one prayer should be, Swami never ever decrease my faith, every day increase my faith, even if it is by a very small amount. Keep on increasing that faith. That's the only prayer we need to do. Because once we have that faith, once that faith keeps on increasing, everything else is taken care of. We will do His work, we will do everything. I want to tell you that you may ask, is this really possible? that after the Mahasamadhi, he will always be there. Two quick instances I'll tell you, and then I'll come to the last part. So if you would have read this, of course, it is in the internet. It's there in my book, The Security Guard Incident in uh, Vrindavan. 
So this was a security guard from Tamil Nadu who was trained in Tamil Nadu to become a security guard and so happened that in our initial posting in Puttapati, he was posted uh, to look out for Sony's residence in Brindavan. And all he had to do in the night was to keep going around. Okay? Now this man's mother was sick and she could not walk after I or something like that. And of course he had heard of Swami and he had heard many people saying that, you know, Swami can do this and Swami can do that and so on, but he was not a devotee himself. So when he started his first day's duty of going around, he started going to Swami and said, Swami, if you are God, okay, I want my mother to start walking. Okay? He doesn't start with that. He gives Tommy in condition also. He must do it in five days. I give you five days time. Okay? At the end of the fifth day, my mother must walk. Then I'll accept your birth, otherwise you're a fraud. Okay? So, in the first day went, nothing happened. Second day went, nothing happened. Third day went, nothing happened. Fourth day went, nothing happened. Fifth day, angry is now going. I knew, I knew what I thought. You cannot do it. You cannot do it. And then he's going around. Okay? Suddenly, one sweet voice calls him by his name and says, Why are you angry with me? Okay? And he turns around and he sees Tommy standing there. Okay? This happened about two, three years after the last month. So, he sees Tommy standing there. And he was supposed to stop. And then he went to Tommy and Tommy said, See, you have given me five days. Today is the fifth day. The floor is not yet over. Okay? The floor is not yet over. You could have waited for five days, no? 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 Okay? Why don't you ask your mother how she is? And then you could have waited for five days. And then you could have waited for five days. Okay? This man brings up his mother and he says, I am all done. I am able to walk. Okay? Can you show me? Now, let me do it, and I can do it, and I can do it. Now, I have met this person. It so happened that I was to give a talk there uh, at uh, the Bundan campus, and therefore I was there, and he was on duty. So I checked out everything with him. Where were you? Where was Tommy? What did he tell you? How did he look like? What, before I write something, I want to, as a scientist, I want to kind of prove everything. He was very accurate in his description. And this happened long before, and he's been seen in flesh and blood. Okay. Swami's enigmas we can never solve. If you ask me, why he didn't appear to Dr. Mohan? Why he didn't appear to uh, Nimish Bhai? Why he didn't appear uh, to Ramesh Kavan? Why he went and appeared to this fellow as a security guard? Swami we can never question. Swami is, you know, whatever Swami does, it is Swami's will, it is his center part, and there's a purpose for it, there's a reason for it, and that's why he did it. In Southern West in Colombo, also something happened. Years ago, it happened, second time it happened. So the first time many years ago, they were, they were building Sai Nivas in Colombo, and then they needed some bricks, some jelly, I think, at that time. Okay? And they were praying to Swami and saying, uh, you know, Swami, we are not able to find the funds and we need this jelly and all that. Suddenly it happened, that time Swami was there. So immediately somebody came, and delivered what they wanted for their construction material. And a few days later, when they came to Puttaparthi, Swami asked them, So you got what I sent you? You're praying for it, no? I sent you. I only brought it to you. So it's good, nice, and all that. So that happened when he was there. Okay? Recently, after the Mahasamadhi, there were some repairs there. Okay? And some bricks were supposed to be delivered. And this is a lorry man who has never seen Swami. He does not even know where Sai Nivas is, but he doesn't know who is Sakti Sai Baba, he doesn't know anything. There was supposed to be some terrible sleeping inside there, but I believe it was raining or something, so those guys were not there. So this man goes there, with great difficulty he finds Sai Nivas is hidden somewhere inside. So he went there, delivers, uh, goes there, and then he starts calling out to people, there's nobody there. Suddenly from the first floor of Sai Nivas, he sees somebody standing there, and calls him by name, and he says, okay, you yourself, unload all the bricks. And he says, how can I unload all the bricks? You know? With my hands I can unload all the bricks. Yes, you do it. In a stern voice, uh, somebody said that. Then he got scared. And so he unloaded all the bricks and all that. Suddenly he looked up and the person is not there. Okay? 
so then he called the person who was the district president, he called, and then he said that uh, the phone number which he had, and he said, sir, I brought the bricks and unloaded it, but your people were not there, the Seva Dalun, then what did you do? No, no, I myself, you know, unloaded it. There was one man, no, standing here with long hair, big hair and all that. He started, uh, you know, scolding me and saying, you can do it, I will help you. And then quickly, quickly, all the bricks were able to do before I realized it. And I said, wait, 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 so whom did you see? No, somebody won an uh, orange dress and some hair and all, he was standing there and he was commanding me, then uh, I did it off anyway. He said, wait, 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 I'll come there. So he went running inside, he opened Sai Nivas, saw his picture, ah, this man, this man, he only was there on top. You mean you saw Tommy there? Yes, he was standing on top. He said. The next day, we called him to Sai Nivas and made him tell the whole thing. And we recorded it, and again, it's on YouTube. So I know, personally, of at least two instances of people whom we have actually seen who have seen Swami in flesh and blood. After Samasama. Okay? If this is not an experience enough, then what other experience do you need? So, finally, let me end by saying, is it time to end up? For five minutes? Five minutes? Okay. So, what is our responsibility? There is no doubt that we are the chosen few. There is no doubt that we have all been blessed to be in His immediate presence, to have His darshan, darshan, everything that we can have. There is no doubt of it that every one of us has experienced His miracles, His love. Don't you think, my dear Sai brothers and sisters, that we also have some responsibility to Swami, to the organization? This organization is something which Swami created in his life. There is no other to my knowledge, who created any organization, any trust, when they were in the physical form. Long after that, people might have started this or started that. This is an organization started by the author himself. We all know that. We all been part of it. So, I think it is our responsibility, first of all, to play the path given to us. Whether we are a simple stepbrother, a simple devotee, an office bearer, it doesn't matter. Whatever role we have been given, we must do it well, and we must do it exactly as Swami would have wanted us to do. Every time we take a decision, we should ask ourselves internally, would Swami have approved this? Yes. Then I'm going ahead and do it. Don't worry what the world talks about you. Don't worry what the world thinks about you. If you think, if your conscience tells you, because Swami is sitting inside you and guiding you, okay? Let us make Swami proud of us. Okay? So whatever we do, you know how much pride Swami has? Oh, these are my students. These are my children. These are my devotees. The pride in Swami says, because for him, that's the only property he has. He doesn't own mansion, he doesn't own bank account, he doesn't have anything. The only thing that he has are his students and his devotees. Okay? So that bond that we have built when we have been alive and we have been in the immediate presence of Bhagavan, that bond should never be broken. We have a duty to put up. After all, Puttaparthi was where he was born. Puttaparthi was where he lived. Puttaparthi was where he built the institution, the temple of healing, the temple of learning. And Puttaparthi is the place where he finally chose to have the Mahasamadhi. Every aspect of his life has been linked to Puttaparthi. And therefore, to a true Sai devotee, such a person who has been blessed to be there, I think Puttaparthi is our real home. Our house is not our home. Puttaparthi is the real home. Puttaparthi is the source. It is that source which has brought us together with him. It is that source which will sustain us for the rest of our life. So let us all go back to Puttaparthi as many times as possible and continue to get his blessings and continue to feel his divine vibrations. Once we cut that cord, we have broken our relationship with our Bhagavan. Let us believe 